got to go up the river about an hour, uh, excuse the wind, and uh, we've got to get to our site quickly because the weather is definitely coming in. There's some uh, pretty bad rain clouds coming and I've got Brucey with me. Hey Bruce, how are you doing? Got my full pack and it is loaded. Don't forget this is a 110 litre pack. <laughs> it's, it's colossal. It is jammed full of stuff. And whoops, got here in the, in the upgraded Ranger with all my beast modifications on it. You have to excuse the wind. And it's pretty uh, it's pretty well set up now for all sorts of adventures. And Bruce can actually sleep under there if he wanted to. I guess we both could. Okay, let's get to it. See you at the campsite. Not far to go. Up there. River bed now. But look at this view. How beautiful is that? And Bruce has decided to have a swim. I think he's trying to cool down a bit. Hey Bruce. Yeah, he found a little pool just in there. Just had to lie down. It's not warm. I mean, it's about 14 degrees centigrade. But for Brucey, that's warm. Okay, at camp. Just got across the river here. We're gonna camp just in those trees there. Okay, Brucey, let's go. Bruce is an expert at crossing rivers. Four legs, always better than two. No one around. Just me, Bruce, and the trees. <sighs> I've got, uh, got to get a move on, rain's coming. So I'm gonna set up a new tarp, four by three meter tarp, and I've got a new Hilleberg tent to test out the Anaris. Um, I've got to get firewood, uh, I've got some great food to cook. So let's get on with it. Tart first. So this is a Flames Creed 4x3 meter tart. Pretty much the same as my 3FUL gear one. A green one that I use a lot. Comes with a couple of or four guy lines, no stakes though. But I'm going to use my own guy line, my own ridge line. No? Okay. So I'm going to hook up a ridge line. See, we've got Bruce in the background. <laughs> It's going to be so much fun.
Okay, all set up. In the nick of time, here comes the rain. Just starting to fall. Let's get my stuff inside. Right, get my tent set up. Now, the anoris is, uh, I guess it's what you'd call a two season tent. Not, I mean, it can be used in three seasons. All Hilberg tents are good for that. But the anoris is really designed for, you know, minimal weather. And the interesting thing with this tent is it has no poles. You can set it up to a ridge line, or you can put your own poles in. So in this case, I'm probably just going to use my own two walking poles to set it up, rather than hooking it up to this ridge line. Um, yeah, I think I'd rather use poles. Okay, so it comes with a bag of pegs. You peg down. Pick down the outer first, and then you put your poles in. So I've just got to work out which way around I want this. Obviously, you don't want it too close to the fire when I have that later. So doors will open that way. Okay, so let's get it pegged out. I think you just do four pegs first, then put the poles in. Welcome back to camping with Tony and Bruce. Here he is. Hey, Brucey. He's been lying under my chair. He's been out playing. Um, I brought him back in. He thank you for my kisses. I'm pretty happy. I've got this, um, so the Anaris tent, 
It's interesting. It is interesting. Um, it's quite finicky. Yeah. <laughs> no pussy. Yeah, it's quite finicky. There's a lot of messing about with it. Hello. Lie down, please. Come on, lie down. In here, in the dry. Good boy, lie down. Yeah. So, he's freaking out because I've suddenly started talking. There's a, yeah, to fine tune it, it's quite a lot of messing about. This is not the sort of tent that you want to be setting up in the rain. Even though it's all attached on the inner, and you can set them both up at the same time, I would say, as, as it is marketed, it's a fair weather tent. But it can cope with the rain, I'd say, quite easily. It seems pretty solid. I mean, we've had some big gusts of wind come through, and it's not gone anywhere. I've got to put my jacket on, it's getting cold. Temperature's starting to drop. I'm getting a bit of wind chill. Not much, though. This setting the, the tent door open behind me is acting like a windbreak. But there are a few problems with this tent, a few issues. Um, that it would be nice if they sorted out. Like there's no, there's no tie off point, no peg out point to this door. Only that door in the middle, because they just assume you're gonna zip it up. Okay, so the problem with that is if you wanna do something like I'm doing, if you wanna peg it out differently, the other door, you can't do it. So I've had to tie a knot in it and attach it to some cord up here. So it's that problem. Um, there's a lot of rain coming. This is meant to die down later. Other problems. Yeah, the inner, attaching it to the outer, um, it's very tight. You don't have to attach it to the outer, but you've got that option if you want to do it. Yeah, so it comes set up attached, and yeah, I just didn't like it, didn't like it. So I've unhooked it all the way around except here, and there, I've tied this end off. There's a lot of space inside, it's a two person, definitely. Um, it's all mesh, except the top is solid material. Uh, it's got two doors one on each side, but the zip, there's only one zip. That's it, so you have to zip it from the top down all the time. So if you want to stick your hand out here at the bottom, you've got to unzip the whole thing. That's a bit of a design flaw. Uh, yeah, there's a lot they could have done better. Yeah. Hey ho. It's, it is what it is. It's a fair weather tent. Um, this is their first version of it as well. I'm sure they'll come up with another version, 2.0. With the poles, it's easy enough. It's, it's just quite finicky. Yeah, I do prefer the other tents. This will have its place though. If I'm going up on the tops, this is so light. If I'm going up on the tops and I know, oh, wow, it's so loud that I'm, I feel like I have to shout for you to hear me. I've got the camera sitting out, <laughs> getting absolutely drenched. I haven't got a rain cover on that at all. So we'll see if it, how it goes. The Sony, uh, my Sony camera, it says it's weather sealed. It's been out in conditions like this before. So fingers crossed it's gonna be okay. Yeah, I didn't bring a camera cover for it this time. Um, it is shutting down. So the tarp is good. The tarp is the same as my 3FUL tarp. I've got a feeling they've just, for the 3FUL have stopped doing this tarp and now Flames Creed do it. It's very, very light, brilliant material. The way it, the water just beads off it forever. It's amazing. So, so easy to dry. Not like those other tarps, even the AquaQuest. You gotta you know wipe that thing down afterwards, yeah. So yeah, it's uh you know me, I like this setup. If this is the first time you've ever seen one of my videos, it's 
is what I do. I camp in horrendous conditions and I push gear beyond what it was actually designed for. And the reason for that is that if you end up buying one of these products and the weather turns on you, it's good to know that it's gonna survive the night. Otherwise you'll have a very sleepless night. And I've tested gear that's failed and uh, had a horrendous night. Uh, so I'm willing to put myself through that for you, for YouTube. Now I'm getting a little bit of pooling here just at the beginning because it is torrential. And you know what? You just always get pooling in torrential rain. I could fix it just by uh, attaching uh, this, but uh, it's just because the, the ridge line is so tight. See, if I pull the ridge line down, it doesn't, it doesn't pull. But because I've got it so tight, it's pooling. But it doesn't matter, I'll just keep flicking it off. And if it was in the middle of the night, I would just uh, loosen this part of the ridge line, which I could do and it would still remain taut. Wow, it's coming down. It's amazing that he's staying here in the dry for a change. Oh, the wind is really ripping as well. Usually he's out, he loves just lying out in the rain. Maybe he's getting soft in his old age. He's curled up on a nice bed of grass there that's bone dry. It's not that cold. I mean, for him, it's very warm. Okay, you know what it is? It's beer o'clock. Uh, actually, you know what? Yeah, beer o'clock. I definitely need a beer. Wow. This is actually one of the the worst storms I've probably recorded on camera so far because of the, the rain, the wind as well. My last camping trip with the bushcraft, that was a horrible morning, yeah. So this is a uh, citizen, rescue citizen rework made with beer, hazy IPA. And this is six and a half percent alcohol. Nice and strong. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Thanks for coming along again. It's very nice. That's nice. Ah. Uh. So the plan for this trip, get a fire going. Now, right now, where my fire pit is, there's a little stream coming past it. Because I've got water diverting off the top that way and out that way, it's going around the outsides of the tent. It's not coming through underneath. So it's bone dry in here. I'm just checking there's no little streams anywhere here. Nope, it's bone dry. Okay, so tarp's doing its job. It's keeping, it's keeping the ground dry. Yeah, it's flowing around me. So it's just missing the fire pit. But I might bring the fire just a bit closer. Uh, we'll see. What I need is red hot coals. There's not much rain getting on the fire pit. I can bring it a little bit closer. Uh, I just don't want to have it directly right under the tarp. Yeah, so what I need to do is process up some wood. I've got this dry piece here that I chopped down last time I was here. So that's nice and seasoned. 
Um, that's gonna last me just to do my dinner because that's all I want it for. Don't really need it for heat right now. And I don't really bother with fires in the morning. I just wrap up where everything I've got. As long as it's not windy, then I'll be okay. Now the wind is coming from behind. So hopefully no smoke. <laughs> I've got my silky saw. I might get a thicker one. This is a silky, what is this one? Silky, a Silky Ultra Axel 240. The blade is a bit wobbly. Yeah, a bit thin, bends quite easily. So I might get a Silky Gun Boy, which is a bit more robust. Got my hatchet to split the wood once I've sorted up. So I'm going to get on with that. Wow. This is seriously heavy rain. So the forecast didn't predict this, as usual. They got it completely wrong. But it is, it's calmed down a bit now. The rivers are actually unavoidable right now because there's just so much rain. I am on a little bit of a high spot, but there's still a channel coming through. And Bruce is lying under my chair here on a, on a dry spot like a high bit, but there's, there's a river running around the side of us. I've got my wood chopped up. That's enough for just one fire, just to cook my dinner. But I've got my tranger as well, just in case. It's still pretty early. It's just nice to chill, the sound of the river and the rain. So what are the updates? Well, this was a delayed trip because I was waiting for my car to be finished. And if you've been following me, then you know I had some work done on it just to help uh, the four x four aspect of it get to harder to reach places. And uh, that's gone well. I'll put a little clip on here just so you can see what it looks like now, but it's quite a machine now and sometimes I do river crossings in it. So I just needed it to be a bit more capable, the Ford Ranger. Now it can clear very big streams, no problem at all. And if I get bogged down, I can winch myself out and stuff like that. Plus there's more room in the back now for, a, for Bruce to have a sleep. And for me to sleep just in case if i have to sleep back in the car again so i've got a nice flat bed in the back with some drawers underneath that should work out quite well now he can smell something it's possible he can smell a deer or a pig but probably a deer they would be out in these conditions it's perfect for deer for a, especially for a stag so keep your eyes peeled because you might see one in the background. He can definitely smell something. And that would be great to get a stag on camera.
This camp is amazing. I do like it. I love these big tarps. It's a four by three tarp. Look at all the amount of space I've got, like a porch. This tent's fine, as I say, a bit finicky. It's a bit of work. But other than that, it's alright. How often I use it? Dunno. I do like self-standing, self-supporting tents. But this is so light. And we're coming into summer here. This would be a perfect summer tent. So we'll see. It's time for a coffee. Warm me up a bit. It's really coming down now. Now this. This is camping in heavy rain. Not, not clickbait. You should see the river that's running down here in front of me and Bruce. That's pretty impressive. Wow, it just, just keeps coming. I brought the camera in under the tarp. I didn't feel comfortable leaving it out there in this absolutely chucking rain. So we've got about, we've got another couple of hours of, uh, of daylight left. It's actually his, it's Brucey's dinner time, but we'll eat together tonight. He's had a little snack on the way here as well, just to keep him going. I wonder how long this is gonna go on for. And no, I'm not faking the rain. To the usual crowd who say that I am. Temperature's dropping. I know it's meant to get to single digits tonight um, so that will be a test of this tent now I've got the fire reasonably close to the tent but it's wet on this side of the tent completely wet so any embers be absolutely fine just coming in waves. Let me know in the comments if you'd want to be here with me right now doing this in these conditions. Or if you enjoy camping in these conditions and know what you're doing. Stay dry. Because that's, that's the trickiest bit, surviving in it. 
So he's curled up. I could put down a bed for him. Doesn't need it, he's lying on grass. He's fast asleep. He's not cold. He's very toasty, he's dry, he's on a high spot. Oh, maybe you knew we were talking about him. I'm loving this setup. I think <laughs> this is the driest I've ever been in this spot, in these, con these sorts of conditions. We will see. See if it makes it through the night. But there was some pretty strong gusts of wind then, and it's, this did not budge at all. So, I'm pretty hopeful. I do like being able to do this with this door. It is a, a brilliant windbreak uh, for both me and for Brucey. Um, let me just check he's not lying in the wet here. Wet for Brucey? No. Just checking. It's all right. Hello. Thank you. Thank you for my kiss. Yep, so as long as he's warm and dry, then that's all good. Don't know if you can see that, he's doing the perfect downward dog. You can see my breath now, so it's definitely the temperature's dropping fast. Uh, so where he was lying, there's a really nice high patch of grass. Yeah. And he's going to go out in the rain now. Bruce, come and lie down. No, 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 no. Bruce, come on. I don't want you getting soaking wet now. Come and lie down. Come on, back on here. Smuggle him. Come on. Come on. Lie down. Lie down. Where you were? No, no, no. Come on. Lie down, Bruce. Lie down. Lie down. Right down. Come on. Get your tail out of there. That's it. Just settle. There you go. Getting him to settle down. That's the hardest bit. So I'm going to have my coffee. Uh, I was wondering if there are any more observations about this tent. It's just quite peculiar. It's quite a peculiar setup. You can pin it right down to the ground to stop any wind getting in. Or you can have it really open and up if you use the guy lines to um, let the air flow through, I guess for summer. I could have guided this I could have pegged this right down, but I've used the guy line uh, just to give myself a bit more space. It'll be interesting to see how waterproof the base is now that there's a bit of a stream going underneath it. But I have confidence in this tent. I have confidence in their materials. These, the ground sheet is called uh, Curlon, and it feels pretty thick. Okay. I think we're ready. Yep. The trusty Tranger 25 kettle. The 27 kettle, I just find it a bit too small. Yeah, so a lot's been going on in my life. <laughs> Still waiting for the insurance. Unfortunately, it's in here, the way they deal with it in New Zealand, when something happens like that natural disaster, it, the insurance company goes through the government first. It's all very socialist. Um, So unfortunately, because of that, we've got to wait. It takes ages. The process takes ages. I don't know if you ever heard of the earthquake that happened in Christchurch. If not, Google it. Um, bit of a fiasco when it came to payout. And that's just the problem here, yeah. The insurance company goes through the government first and of course, 
that slows everything down. So I think it's been now, it's been now what, month and a half? Maybe two months? Gosh, I've just noticed something. The tarp is leaking. I just saw some drops of water come in. That is impossible. Where has this water come from? Oh, there's a tear. I don't believe it. Oh my word, there's a tear in the tarp. This is a brand new tarp, straight out the packet, and there's a tear in it. And the water's coming in. So there is a tear right here, tiny tear. This has just come straight out of, look at that, water's coming in there. Looks like a weak point. Uh, it's actually not even a tear, it's actually just badly put together there. Wow, that's, a, that's faulty. So much for the Chinese tarp then, being better than AquaQuest. I'm gonna have to tape that up. I wonder if there's any more anywhere. Let me have a look if there's any drops coming in anywhere else. No, it looks like it's just that one spot. Wow, right there. That's gonna go in a storm. Okay. Well, I could put some seam sealer on it. I could dry it and seam seal it. Um, I do carry some with me, but I don't know if seam seal will stick to this material. Okay, it's really tiny, so only a drop is coming in. So I might just leave it and see what happens. Flames Creed. It's not, it's not an actual uh, tear. It's, it's running along one of the nylon lines. So, damn. It's really tiny, just like a drop coming through. But you wouldn't want to be in a hammock underneath that. You'd have to seal that from the outside. Wow, that is annoying. Never had this problem with my 3FUL. Oh, that just shouldn't happen. What a shame, what a shame. Oh, I can't believe I've got a gear fail already. I really do pick them, don't I? Oh well, it is what it is. I'll keep an eye on it. Um, I might, see duct tape doesn't stick to this material. Uh, whatever it's called, sil nylon, I can't remember what it's called. But yeah, it doesn't stick to this, so. I might have to try some seam sealant later. All right, I think. I think it's time to, uh, to light the fire. Yeah, let's get into that time. Because um, I want to get a better coals and get dinner on. Start to get dark. So what I will do is I've got some fat wood. I will just Split that a bit, make it easier to light. Great stuff, fatwood. And I mean, you don't have to go hunting for it. You can just buy it in shops.
Oh, it smells so good. The, the, the pine resin is so nice. Right, let's get this fire cranking. Now, there is rain coming in here, so this is gonna be a bit tricky to get this going, but we will persevere. It's really coming down. You should be able to see it dripping off the tarp. <laughs> Now, the beauty of fatwood is you don't need any kindling either. It just lights. Saying that, I've said that before and it's gone out. Okay, we're in business. Let's hope this wood is fairly dry. Seems it. Oh, the only problem with fat would smoke. Oh, this is really obnoxious and stinky. But man, does it give you a quick flame. And lots of great heat. So I've got to keep the rain off the fire. It's the best way to do that is get a good coating on top. So it gets nice and hot underneath. Obviously, I don't want a giant, where am I? I'm here. I don't want a, you know, a massive fire. Because um, it, it will reach the tent. It will reach the tarp. But just big enough. And then I just got to work on getting some coals. Bit by bit. Gosh, I can feel the heat from that already. That's really hot. All right. Hopefully, hopefully, we're in business. Who can tell? The wind. Wind is swirling, yeah swirling all over the place. Let's just hope it takes. Hope this stuff is dry enough on the inside. It feels it, but it's so deceiving. See, it's not roaring. Get a bigger stick. Well, that's why there was a knot in there. You, know, you see, I've got a horrible feeling that that's not taken. Maybe there is too much moisture in this wood. Come on.
<sighs> I've still got more fat wood, just in case. Got another big piece here. I just hope that does the job. Bruce, no, 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 no. Out of there, out of there. What do you think you're doing? Go on, go and lie down. Lie down. <laughs> I might have needed to make really, really thin pieces. I thought this was dry enough that it would just take, but you know what, now that I'm feeling it, maybe it isn't. Thing is, we've had so much rain here I've got a feeling this is quite damp. It just feels dry though. That would be a real shame if I can't have a fire because all the timber's damp. You see it's damp on the outside. Under the bark. Okay, what I might do is I might have to shred this really thin. See if I can get something out of it because I don't think it's gonna take otherwise. Wow, and I felt so much heat from that at the beginning. What's the driest bit? Yeah, it's pretty dry. Try harder. Well, I guess all we can do is wait and see. At least it's smoking, it's a good sign. I don't know what's going on with the rain. My little hole up here isn't, just one tiny drop keeps coming through. It's not bad. but I am gonna to have to, um, I'm gonna to have to patch that definitely because uh, it's just gonna get worse and worse otherwise. Oh, what a shame. Flames Creed. Now the wind is actually blowing in the right direction, which is handy. It's helping. Oh, smoke. Gosh, temperature's really dropped. Yeah, I'm glad I've got this going just at the right time. Got my fire cranking. It's looking good. Oh, this fire is nice and hot. Wow, what a difference. It took ages. And what I had to do was use the um, mattress inflator to get the air into it. That's what got the fire going. Flex tail gear, mattress inflator. Learned my lesson about those things. It's in, it, it makes such a difference. I'm just trying to dry out some of this wood, just superficially, I know it won't do that much to it. Um, but that's why I was struggling to get it lit. The inside, it was just, still had a bit too much moisture in it. But we have a good fire and it is hot. And I've got plenty of wood now. So what I might do is get my dinner on Oh, it's wet. It's really wet out there. I hope I don't get any comments saying, oh, you faked it. I can't see any rain. Of course you can't see any rain. 
because the camera, I don't know if you've noticed, really doesn't pick up rain very well. Probably does now because there's a whole ton of it coming off the tarp right onto the camera. Let's hope the camera survives. Fingers crossed. Okay, so for dinner tonight, first things first, got a cast iron camping grill, camping pan, I'm gonna put that straight on the fire. Got a headlamp from Phoenix. She might take the beanie off because I'm quite hot in front of this fire. Phoenix, if you're watching this, needs to be bigger, the head strap. Now you can see Bruce is going nuts. That's because I've got this light on here and it's triggering him as usual. Anyone who watches this channel knows what Bruce is like. Bruce, it's going chill, chill, lie down, lie down. Good boy. <laughs> God, what a nightmare. Okay, so for dinner tonight, pretty simple. Got a massive tomahawk steak for Bruce and myself to share. And I'm not putting any seasoning on except salt. A little bit of oil. A little bit of vegetable oil. Straight in the pan. Do the job. So yeah, this is my new, new camping, um, what you call it? What do you call it? Cast iron. Yeah, my new camping cast iron griddle. Right, steak. Look at the size of that. So just gently, bit of salt on it. Not too much. And, oh, listen to that. What a sound. What a satisfying sound of steak on the cast iron. Look at Bruce, I can, I can see him behind me. Bruce, stop it. God, he almost took the whole tarp down. This is a nightmare. Sorry about that, right. So why did I bring cast iron? I don't know, so many people have said it and it's not, I haven't come too far this time. Gosh, I'm wet from just going out there and doing the camera. Um, yeah, I just wanted to do cast iron this time on a fire. Because I think Flavor wise, yeah, I think you can't beat it. The second I come back, the smoke goes right where the camera is. Not much more I can do about it. It's just, the, the wind is swirling in all directions. Can you see him behind me? Going absolutely ballistic. Bruce, I can see you. Oh dear, oh dear. He's having so much fun. He wants his dinner. So yeah, the cast iron grill. I just, they're just heavy, but this is a nice small one. It's um, 24 by 24 centimeters. It's pretty compact, perfect for, for this steak. Absolutely perfect. And I just feel more comfortable throwing that straight in the fire than 
my trangipans. Yeah. Look at the size of this thing. Huge. He's he's over there. Shall I shall I put his light on him? That's always a risky move because it does trigger him a bit more, but I get to see where he is then, which is the most important thing. So I will, in fact, put his light on him. And then you might see him running around. But what I'll do is, I'll make it red, I think. I can't remember how you make it red. There we go. Can I turn that down? Uh, the red's too bright. Just too bright, that's all I need. Bruce, come here. Let's put this on, let's put your light on. Oh, you're soaked, yuck. <laughs> Having so much fun. All right, there you go. Okay, now you can see him zipping around behind me. All the pan's on fire. Look at that. All the fat's on fire. There is actually a drainage slot here as well. Smoke. Ah. Ah. Got to move. Why? Oh. I hate smoke. Stop, please. I can see him walking around behind me. I just know he's there. Now this is a super thick steak. So I want to get it just right. I just want it medium rare if possible. Here comes the rain again. It's just rain, wind, cold, rain, wind, cold. It's just doing the whole cycle. It's very grim. It's very grim, but I am warm because I've got a fire. Fire just helps. Look at that, smoke straight into the camera. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move it, aren't I, again. Oh, I can't catch a break. Oh, we look, oh, look at that. The second I come back, the smoke blows towards the camera. It's gonna have to do. <laughs> I just can't keep doing this. You can see him behind me. Oh, smoke. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. Blow the other way. Ah. Oh. Oh. This wind is swirling all over the place. It's ridiculous. Should have made a wind deflector. I tell you what, it is so muddy now. It's crazy. This is why I bring boots like this. Plus the, plus the uh, river crossings. Now, the river <laughs> was a trickle when we came in here. It's gone right up. Yeah. So we probably won't be going out over the river. There is another route out. Um, I'm hoping this rain doesn't keep up and then by tomorrow that will have dropped back down again and because it's so much quicker to go that way. It really is. Bruce, mind the cord. Good boy. He keeps hitting the paracord on the tent. Nightmare. Wow. Oh my word, that is heavy. Oh. What was I just saying about I hope it dies down? I hope the camera is going to be okay. Fingers crossed.
Let me just move it round a bit so it's not in the full path. Oh, the smoke. Smoke, stop, please stop. Ah. That's what it wanted. It wanted to get cranking. That's why it was smoking. Just one bit of coals on there. Oh. Wow, this rain. Unbelievable. Got to try and keep the camera out of the rain because it, it's so heavy, the rain. Oh, stop with the smoke, please. Oh, it's just following me. This is crazy. Now it's following me completely. You move over here. Oh. Oh, man. Just managed to get out the way. Oh, come on, please. Stop, smoke, please. This is just not, not happening. Oh, this is what I hate about campfires. Look at this. Look at, look at that. Wherever I go, look at that. It doesn't matter. It's going to follow me straight back again. You watch. It will follow me. Yep, there it is. <sighs> okay. Just, please, stop, stop. Oh, the wind. What is going on with this? <laughs> look, it's following me everywhere. Oh, I've got to sit back from it. Can't take it anymore. Oh. oh, I just hate the smoke. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> Worst campfire ever for smoke. Wow. Oh. All right, so I finally found a spot about 10 feet away from the fire. Okay, I need to just flip this steak over now. Oh my God, please stop smoking. I'm begging you. Ah. There you go. All good. Woo. So, can't get me here. Please, <laughs> does anyone have a solution for smoke that just, just wants to follow you everywhere? Oh, just to get out of that smoke for just a minute. Oh dear. Right, I reckon this has only got a couple of minutes to go on this side and we're good. So what I'll do is, I will get uh, Bruce, mind out. He keeps knocking the cord on the tent. I will get Bruce's dinner. Um, I'm so sorry about the smoke. I really am. This is driving me absolutely insane. It doesn't matter where I move the camera or what I do, it follows it. It's just crazy. Okay, here's Bruce's bowl. So he's gonna get some steak. He's gonna get half steak and half of his dog food. <laughs> oh man, this is just dire, really dire. Oh, I'm gonna try one more time with the camera. I literally just moved it and it was fine. There was no smoke going onto the camera. And then the second I put it there, smoke picks up. Bruce, stop. 
Come here. He's trying to knock the tarp over again. Right, so he, he gets his dog food. Wait, Bruce. Just a bit. He's a small dog, don't forget. Not a big dog, he doesn't get loads. Okay, and then I'm gonna cut him off some steak. Oh, uh, what have I done with everything? <laughs> Here we go, right. So I'm gonna cut him a couple of pieces of steak. Oh yeah, he's gonna love this. This is a big dinner for him. His is gonna be very rare. Yeah, not too much steak for him because, as I said, he's a small dog. I don't want him being sick. And I also don't want him, <laughs> I don't want him having to eat this in the uh, pouring rain. Sit, Bruce. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit of water in here. Sit. Sit. You gotta sit, Brucey. Bruce, you gotta sit. Come over here. Ah, sit. sit. Good boy. Go on then, have your dinner. Good boy. Oh, he tried his hardest, those. He was so excited. <laughs> oh man, I tell you, it is just coming down. I'm hoping this fire stops smoking in a second because there's not much timber, there's not much wood left in here anyway to smoke, so just some coals. It's possible I'd have enough left in the morning for, for a fire, but if I do that, well, it's a lot of faff. Took me ages to get this one going. <laughs> so with my steak, I am having coleslaw sal salad. Oh man, I tell you, it is, it, it is absolutely brutal. I hope you can hear me. The wind is ripping through camp. Bruce has eaten all of his dinner. Didn't take him long. Not that it ever does. <laughs> Campfires, they, they, they're great in one way and they absolutely suck in another way. Oh, campfires, can't put them out. It should get cold. Now my little hole here, just a tiny drop keeps coming in. I just hope it doesn't get any bigger. I've definitely got to fix that. I wish the wind would stop. It's, it just, it's swirling. So, it just keeps going everywhere. Oh, there you go, we've got a bright, we've got a moment, a moment with the wind is blowing in the right direction. But that's what happens in this area. It just swirls around, nothing you can do and it's, it's very rare that it's not windy. And you know me, I hate the wind. Yeah, a couple of drops up here. I know you can't see them, but yeah, just a couple of little. I don't know if you pick that up coming through that little hole. And it is a tiny hole. I got another beer. This is a bit stronger, this one. This is a Scotch ale. Uh, this is a Renaissance stone cutter Scotch ale. Can't remember what the uh, percent alcohol is, but it's quite high. 7%. Uh, 
I think. Yeah, I think so. I think it's 7%. Roll on summer when you don't need any uh, fires. Because I tell you, so if you're not used to having a campfire with um, it when you go camping, let me tell you, it is a nightmare because everything smells for a long time of smoke. Really, really bad. And it just doesn't go. Doesn't matter how much you air it for. It just stays smoky. <sighs> right, I'm making my buffalo ranch salad. Now, there's quite a lot here, so I might save the rest of it. So the river is really up high. I'm hoping, yeah, as I said earlier, I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to get out over the river. Otherwise, it's a long walk round. <laughs> Which is fine, I mean, I can get through the river, but I wouldn't put Brucey through it. And that's why um, I didn't come camping. That's why I had to bail recently on a camp trip. Yeah. Hey, how are we looking here? So say we're looking good. All right, so. Then I've got to get the fire cranking again. But it's gonna get smoky again. <laughs> right, let me move you around a bit so you can... Testing. Oh, okay, I've got a reprieve from the smoke for like just a second. And I see Bruce is... Uh, is he moving off? Where is he? Oh, he's just behind me. Okay. <laughs> All right, right, let's get this steak on. Look at that. Lovely. Okay. Yeah, that's a lot of salad. We'll save that coleslaw. Wow, this rain isn't just, it just isn't giving up. Okay, now what I do need to do unfortunately is get this fire cranking again because it's always nicer sitting out in the evening with a fire the only thing is it's going to trigger loads of smoke so i'm sorry about that but needs must i'm probably going to have to use my um Flextail pump again to get it cranking. Uh, <laughs> this is just shocking weather, it really is. Okay, let me uh, flextail pump. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing here. <laughs> That's the way we do it. I can't begin to uh, explain how hard it is to camp in these conditions and film for YouTube. It's, it's so hard, it really is. Now when this bone cools down, because I haven't cooked the bone, the bone is still pretty raw. Once this bone has cooled down, uh, what's left, I'm gonna give that to him. And that will keep him occupied quite well. So I'm hoping this fire kicks off again. Right, so. Let's 
steak and coleslaw. Oops. Oh, please taste delicious. Please taste delicious. Let's get a nice pink bit. Oh yeah. She said, he said. Oh. I can't believe Bruce actually had steak before me. Mmm. Oh yeah. So good. Mm. Mm. This is so good. Cheers, everybody. Oh. Okay. I am gonna take my time with this. I'm gonna relax, because that all stressed me out with the smoke and everything and filming with the smoke. I'm gonna let the fire build up again, because the smoke's gonna billow a bit, so it's difficult to film. I might let you watch Brucey for a little bit, lying in the rain, because that's what he does. I can't stop him while I finish this. And in case you're wondering, this is what he does all the time when it rains, even at home. That was a fantastic dinner. But now it is absolutely chucking down. <laughs> it's just coming and going, coming and going. The river, so loud, the stream. Still got my fire going, but you know what? It is cigar time. Now, I got a comment from someone. It wasn't a particularly nice comment, it was a pretty rude comment, but anyway, it was lecturing me about Monte Cristo number fours that they're not capped at the end. Well, you know what, there's the cap. He said I faked it. Well, there it is. There's the cap. Monte Cristo, number four. I'll show you the box. Some people just don't have anything better to do. Whatever. I don't fake anything. You might see Brucey walking around behind me. So yeah, I put some logs on the fire. There's not much left to go. It'll be out soon. Looking forward to this cigar. Ah, I hope you can hear me over the noise of all this. Let me just check, make sure you can. Yeah, you can hear me, okay. Can you? Can you hear me? Yep, you can, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know where Bruce has gone. He's run off somewhere. You'll probably see him behind me. Yep, this fire is quite small now, but Red hot coals, giving off a lot of heat. This rain, it wasn't forecast. I mean, I, I love camping in the rain, but I'm glad I've got all the right gear, because, oh my God, it's insane. This fire might be tiny, but it is giving off a ton of heat. The smoke has been biblical. It's the only word I can think of to describe it. It's just, it was just been driving me crazy. And you know why? Because the wood is not wet, not green. It's just slightly damp. Um, if you see Bruce behind me, <laughs> put it in the comments. 
Yeah, it's it's just um, not that great wood. Hey, it's giving off a ton of heat though, but it all it comes with a ton of smoke. Yeah. Ah, what do I have this time in the old flask? Cheers, everybody. Oh, that's so nice. Well, I can tell you now, it's the Kraken rum, spiced rum, absolutely delicious. Oh, that's it. If the wind just stays like that, from that side, pushing the smoke that way, perfect. Absolutely perfect. So, my camp, my setup. Look, I'm, I love it. I love it. I tell you what. It would be a perfect summer camp as well, even with heavy rain. If you didn't need to have the campfire, it would just be perfect. The campfire is actually the one thing that, because of the smoke, ruined it a bit. Um, but just find, finding dry wood here is so difficult. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this light. This Fenix light is uh, quite bright. There. Let me move it out of the way a bit. Oh, I've just seen Brucey. Hey, Brucey, what are you doing? There he is. Look at him. There's a little bone for you here. Here, Brucey, what's this? Bruce, what's this? Do you want it? Go on then. So he immediately takes it to the rain. I can't explain him, honestly. He's a crazy dog, what can I say? It's what he does, he loves the rain. So the fire now is cranking, just pretty much just coals. A little bit of smoke coming off it. Not much. Brucey's got a bone, it's chucking with rain. I've got a rum. Who would like to be here right now with me? I just hope the camera lasts and doesn't pack in. This is the worst condition this camera has sat out in. Definitely. Torrential deluge. Yeah. I'll have to do a uh, review of this camera one day just to uh, explain how amazing it is. Yeah, he's behind me having his bone. So much heat coming off this fire. I reckon there's about another 30 minutes, if that, where this fire will be giving off this sort of heat. And then it will be time to uh, go in the tent. I'm looking forward to sleeping in this tonight. It looks like it's got a lot of room. Um, I'm just not sure about how cold it's going to be. It's all mesh. It is meant to be a fair weather tent, but I want to push it and see, because you just never know. You could be out camping in perfect conditions and then suddenly a storm comes in. You need to know, is it going to be okay? Wow, this smoke. I thought it was done with, but it's just swirling around. At least it's not swirling on me, it's just swirling over the camera. Sorry about that. Yes, I know, the irony of having a cigar and I'm complaining about the smoke of the fire. So I want to give a... Um, I want to give a shout out to everyone who has contributed treats for Bruce and for myself on Buy Me A Coffee. And in particular, everyone who, who has joined our YouTube channel. 
Uh, thank you so much. All your names are here. Um, it's much appreciated. It helps us. Um, it, it, it just demonstrates that people like what they, they see and they want to contribute. They want to be a part of it. Um, and for that, we're very thankful. Um, as you know, we're going through some financial issues at the moment because our business is closed down because of all of our damage. Insurance hasn't paid yet, so. Spending money on all this gear, I don't get it for free. I buy this gear so I can review it accurately. It's expensive. Modifications to the truck to come out and do this. It's expensive, it does all add up. Um, so every little helps. And even if it's just buying treats for myself and Bruce, that all helps, buying a beer. Thank you so much, I much appreciated. I also wanna thank everybody for subscribing. I think we, uh, we just hit 40,000 subscribers. 40,000, it's amazing. Can't believe it. I have, I can't explain just how happy I am to hit that benchmark. Oops, my cigar's gone out, I've been yapping so much. Um, it's just, uh, it's just fantastic. I remember doing the video, I'll say it again, but I remember doing the video of when I, I think when I hit a thousand, Yeah, when I hit 1,000, I did the video uh, to say thank you and what's next, where will we go? <sighs> I mean, deep down, I, I thought maybe we would, yeah, get up there. Um, I just didn't think it would be so quick. Yeah. And it means so much. It's been, you know, if you've been following the channel, it's been a rubbish year for me. It's been a tough time. Yeah, it's um Yeah, it's been very hard. Losing my uh losing my dad. Getting COVID being separated from my family for so long because of quarantine and couldn't get back to New Zealand. Yeah. It's been a very hard year. We've had a lot happen, a lot go wrong. But we still persevere. We try and get through it with a smile on our face because other people are suffering worse than we are. And I have to keep reminding myself of that. So to all of you, thank you very much. It re really means a lot to me. And to my wife. And to Brucey. It really means a lot. So thank you. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much.
hate blabbing so much. Oh, whenever I do these videos, I say to myself, keep it together this time. People will be getting fed up with this. But I just keep thinking of my dad, who I lost this year, and then just everything else piling on top. Oh, wow. If this is what's kept me going, motivated, this and my family and my son, Brandon. Yeah. Our friends that support us. Yeah, it's, it's been tough. But thank you again. I can hear the, uh, I can hear rocks, boulders moving in the stream from the force of the water. It's pretty extreme, extreme. So I don't know which way we're gonna walk out tomorrow. <laughs> hey, Brucey. Bruce. He was there. So my fire is almost out. I'm loving my camp now that the smoke's blowing the right way. It's a shame about this little tiny tear in the tarp, it's letting droplets in. Uh, but uh, it is what it is, I'll deal with it and fix it. So I'm gonna smoke the rest of my cigar, have my rum. I'm gonna relax, listen to the rain and I'll come back to you when we're ready for bed. Oh, so, <laughs> we're in bed. You can probably hear the river. It's really loud. We had a lot of rain, like a lot of rain, and it's still raining. I'm liking it inside this anorus. It's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, I think if it was fair weather, this is an awesome tent. Rainy weather, not bad. Storm, no chance. You don't want to use this. You just don't. Um, Bruce is all tucked in. He's under here. Hello. Oh, he's already going to sleep. He's so comfy. There we go. He's in his blanket, on his comforter. He's already going to sleep. He will sleep well tonight. He's going to sleep better than I will, because I'll be up worrying. I do worry about the stress on the sides. It, it feels like I'm pulling down on these, but I guess it's designed to do that. I've got it set to the right height, but it still feels like it's tight whatever that was a good night happy yeah I had a lot of fun I'm a bit worried about the river in the morning but hopefully it will have died down by then it is loud as you can hear great meal superb meal that was a beautiful steak Bruce loved his steak yeah everything about it was good yeah the coleslaw whatever the beers they were great and my rum with my cigar Superb. 
So, yeah, everything's set up. I haven't got the out the door outside closed. You probably can't tell. I've just got the mesh, but the door is still open. Because uh, I'm under the tarp, so the advantage of the tarp. Yeah, there's a lot of space in here. I mean, look at this. I, I'd say it's a squeeze with two people. Yeah, but definitely one person and the dog, awesome. He's buried under here. Oh, he's asleep. Oh, he's asleep already. Jeez. He's cozy. He's been going nuts. All right, everyone. Unless something significant happens in the night, which it won't, I'll see you in the morning. And I need to pass out. Night, everybody. Oh, my God. It's chucking down. already been asleep well in bed for 10 minutes it's coming down again I thought it was going to stop he's he's just gone He only woke up because I said something. Okay, I'm gonna try and get back to sleep. Blanket. He had his blanket on, I'd say, his quilt pretty much all night. But he kicked it off, I think about a couple of hours ago. Maybe he was hot. Um, but he's nice and dry now. He was wet when he came to bed, really wet. I toweled him off. And now he's bone dry, very warm. Very cozy. It's lovely in the morning. Oh, oh yes. So excited. I think he likes this tent because it's all mesh. And he can see out. Um, so he enjoys that. He likes being able to see out. Don't you, Brucey? Okay, Bruce wants to go out. Out. Okay, okay. Bruce wants to go out and pee. And he's very ready. Hold on. You want to go out? Hang on. Sit down. Just wait. Oh, let's let Bruce out first. Uh, hang on. Wait, Bruce. What? Destroying the tent. Very difficult to do this one-handed. Hang on, Bruce. Okay, go on. There he goes. Oh, just gonna check out the campfire. Let's see if there's any food anywhere. I'm sure he does anything else. So, oh, it rained all night. Pretty much. Close this up before the sound flies come in. Yeah, it's annoying that there's only one zip in this thing on the door. Oh, don't know what they were thinking there, but I guess it's for weight. It requires a different type of zip to have two on there. Um, 
Oh, it was comfy. Very comfy. The tent, actually, this is a long tent. You know, I'm used to having material shapes on me. You can actually pin this back even more. So you've got even more space. So it's a good size. No condensation at all, at all. But that's because maybe mainly I've got the door open, but it is just the material. It's very good, breathable. The door, there's lots of gap underneath to let air flow through. And if you think how wet it is here, the conditions, it, it, that is incredible. There's no condensation in here. Get Brucey out there. Now. That's it. Oh dear. Yeah, I slept well. Listen to the birds now. They woke me up. Oh. The sound of the river. Oh man, that's loud. Oh, it's so loud. <laughs> I might just wait here for a few hours and just let it drop considerably because if it doesn't rain anymore, that will drop really quickly. Uh, make it so much easier to walk out that way. So, you know what you did? Oh, that was really warm. And my quilt, my convertible quilt. This is my um, enlightened equipment conundrum. So you see it's got a full length zip and it becomes uh, a proper quilt. Um, but I've got it done up as duvet. Because uh, this is obviously a lot of mesh, so it's quite a drafty tent. Um, so yeah, you want a sleeping bag, really. I don't like quilts where there's any chance of a draft. Because it just seems to find me. I don't know how. Oh my god, look at him. I can see him under the door. Trying to stick his head in for me. It's very snug. Oh, so hopefully it's stopped raining now. And, um, yeah, this river will drop. So I need coffee. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ah. Coffee is needed. Oh. Hello, Brucey. <sighs> it's pretty chilly. I think it's just started to rain again. Nightmare. The river has gone down quite a bit, so it'll go down more. Right, so Bruce, Bruce wants his breakfast, which I have to find. Oh, here it is. Okay. Oh, Brucey, mind out. Ugh. Um. This is really hassling me for this. Let me move it up here. So, hang on. Wait, Bruce. Be patient. I know. Hello, my lovely. Such a good boy. Good boy. Go on then. <laughs> He's so sweet. Coffee time. Desperate for coffee. Morning everybody, morning coffee. It's starting to rain again, on and off. <laughs> I can't catch a break. The underside of the tarp is loaded with condensation. 
which isn't surprising given how, ground, how wet the ground is. Everything is drenched. Don't know where Bruce is. Oh, there he is. <laughs> you always know where he is more than I do, unless he's got his light on. Just having my second coffee. Let me show you around camp. There's the monster. He hasn't budged for quite a while. It's my Flames Creed, Flames Creed top. Here's the uh, little, little nick just there. See, it's not actually a tear. It's, see that? I don't know if you can see it. It's like it's um, come from the factory like that. I mean, it, well, it is like a tear, but that's how it came, straight out of the pack. That's a, that's a big problem. So, the full scale of my camp. Bruce, just, Bruce is just keeping me in, in vision just long enough. That's how it's set up between that tree and that tree there. Ridge line. All really nice and taut. Uh, got the power cord extra extra tight. There's my Garmin InReach Mini that I take everywhere with me. And we're at 525 meters. No, it doesn't say it. Uh, it's got my location, the weather forecast for my location. Yeah, so you can do quite a lot of things with it. I just bring up the, um... oh, there you go, this location. And that's the height. 535 meters. Oh, Bruce is onto something. Hey, Brucey. You're having fun. You're stalking. Hello. Hello. Morning. Did you have a nice sleep and a nice breakfast? Oh, you had breakfast. Or breakfast. Oh, you've had your breakfast, Brucey. There's the river. So yesterday when we came in, it was a lot lower and it was completely clear, beautiful water. And then last night as it was chucking down, this was all covered in, this was just murky with all of the um, grit from ground up rocks. So it was very cloudy and now it's starting to clear, the water's starting to get clearer now and it's definitely dropping the river. It was right up before, so it's dropping nicely. By the time we're ready to leave, that should have dropped properly. And yeah, and that's my setup. If the sun shines, it would be nice. Hello, Bruce. And then my coffee. Oh, I'll be making my pancake soon, and that's my view out, obviously, to the camera at the moment, but um, straight down the river. As you can see, I've got tons of space here with this 4x3 awning. Have a nice breeze. Ooh! Almost did a pop, pop. <laughs> uh, loads of room in the anaris, as you can see. And I've with this massive tarp, I've got half, pretty much half the tent, more than half the tent covered. It's a good, a good gap between the inner and the outer. So they put this sort of material on top in case there is any condensation so it doesn't drip down on you. And then they've got this mesh. Um, it's actually fairly windproof, the mesh. It's so fine that not a lot of breeze actually gets through it. 
just a tiny bit. So yeah, quite impressed with that. As I said, I was warm last night in my sleeping bag and it did go down to single digits. That's my 24 by 24 campfire. I think that's the brand. It's, I think it's Australian. Campfire uh, griddle, cast iron griddle. Yeah. So there we have it. Camel. Now the sun is actually trying to come out. But the temperature has really dropped. Whoa. Probably because it's clear sky. Okay, it's time for um, it's time for pancakes. Just prop that up on there. Pancake mix. Someone asked me in the comments if I make my own pancake mix. <laughs> no, I can't be bothered, I'm too lazy. So you're meant to half fill it. And then put the rest in. It says to turn it upside down. That's better. years of practice. Right. I've got a sort of a doughy mixture on the top now. Oh, someone knows I'm making food. Let me see. That's his, the, his nose is incredible. Oh, look at him sniffing. He knows. He knows pancakes. Yeah, how thick are these going to be? Let's have a look. And I've got a surprise for everybody. I bet you can't guess what it is. No one's going to guess what my surprise is. Oh, I've made it too runny. Uh, well, I'll let that sit there for a bit. What's my surprise? I know you're all gagging to know what the surprise is. You're gonna see in a minute. The surprise is I've got a non-stick tray in Japan. Woohoo! Now, anyone who's been uh, following my channel will know this has been impossible for me to get up until now. I couldn't get this anywhere that would ship, especially that would ship to New Zealand. I actually reached out to Tranja and I got no response from them whatsoever. Nothing. Nothing at all. In the end, I man they had suddenly had one in stock. Um, and I can't remember if this is just the standard one or a hard anodized non-stick one. But there you go. And I got it. A Tranja non-stick frying pan. I can't believe it. After all this time of trying, I ordered it on their website. Came a few days later. Incredible. Why they couldn't help me get one, I have no idea. I asked so many times, but nothing. Didn't even, don't even get a response from them. Which is a bit rude. Oh, whatever. I've come to uh, expect uh, most suppliers of things now 
tend to just ignore them, ignore you. You know what's happened is, um, let's put plenty of oil in because I want some good fats in this. Um, I think what's happened is people have got fed up. Hold on, let me move this. Is that better? Almost. I think people have got fed up of uh, influencers. Just taking everything for granted and, and not threatening, but just everything seems to be about influencers nowadays. I don't want to be an influencer. I just want to, I wanted a pan and I was willing to pay for it. I don't ask for anything for free. I'm happy to pay. Because uh, then I can give an unbiased view on it. I'm sorry if you're misting up a bit again. It's because I've, I've cleaned the lens and uh, it's going to go through that whole repeat motion of burning off any moisture in there. So yeah, I think influencers have ruined it for everybody. Yeah. They've just gone too far and now companies don't respond anymore. So, whatever. <laughs> I got my pan, that's all that matters. And that's all I wanted. Now, I even have a lid, but I don't think this fits this. No, it doesn't. That's um, a straining lid or cooking lid for my bowls, which is very handy to have as well. Now, Bruce is lying, Bruce is lying down on the other side of the tent. I can just see him underneath. The second I get the pancakes on, he's going to spring into action. You'll see. Okay, now, non-stick pan, but I want to just, I have washed it in hot water. I'm expecting this thing to cook a lot quicker than my other pan, which means I can do my full size pancakes again. And anyone who knows me knows I like massive, thick pancakes. I don't do lots of little ones. I do one big, massive one. Oh, it's lumpy again. <laughs> oh, one of these days I'll get this mixture right. Now I know people are gonna call, comment. Oh, you've put far too much in there. Do smaller amounts. No. Sorry, I just won't. That's how I do my pancakes, nice and big. That's how I like them. This is gonna be good. I've got plenty of maple syrup. Got my plate ready. Got my plastic spatula ready you don't want to use metal on the non-stick surface. So we'll see how long this takes. And if I'm confident enough to flip it, I doubt it, doesn't it? Yeah, I doubt I'll be flipping this. Wow, now you can see my breath. It's just got really cold. And that's why the camera is fogged up a little bit. Uh, it's just adjusting to the temperature but it's temperatures just plummeting and yet the sun's coming out. Uh, it's, it's because it's a southerly. So when you're in the Southern hemisphere, southerlies are cold. Yeah, really, really cold. Um, I'd say this is, it's, it's, it's dropped too good. Since I've been sitting here and have my coffee, it's probably dropped five degrees. It's definitely single digits. My hands are getting cold. Okay. Are we doing pancakes in real time? I don't think so. So I'll, I'm going to let this just cook a bit and I'll come back to you. Testing one, two, three. Right, I put the simmer ring on. Um, 
because I think it was going to burn. So this will be a true test to see how good this Tranja non-stick surface is. As much as I like my big frying pan, my GSI, um, it is big and it doesn't fit on the Tranja properly. So it, it, it sits on this upper bit, so so much heat escapes. So it takes so long for everything to cook. He's over there, you can't see him, but as soon as he gets more of a whiff of this, he's gonna, it's gonna make a beeline for here, I guarantee it. There's more cloud coming over. Temperatures just frigid. I could do with a campfire right now. <laughs> oh but it's nice not to have any smoke. Oh, that smoke last night was horrible. This, as long as this doesn't burn, as long as it doesn't burn, I'm okay. And I have got the simmer ring on. So with the Tranja, you've got this lid uh, that you can put on top of the main alcohol burner to then simmer. Yeah, make sure you don't burn anything. And you can really close that down so it's just very mild as well. So that's, that's pretty cool. As I say, I love cooking on this. It's a nice stable platform, even though I have knocked it over once. That was my fault. It's quiet. Not that that makes any difference because of the noise of the river. It's just, it's just a nice kit. I really enjoy cooking on this thing. Yeah. It's definitely something romantic about it. Okay, I say, I'd say we're close to being able to flip this. And give it just a few more minutes. I don't know where he's gone. He was just here on the other side of the tent. It's gone for a wonder. I'm sure you'll see him before I do. Now, interestingly, with the camera, it is still foggy a bit. It will clear. Um, yeah, there was water in the battery compartment. It's still working, but that deluge <laughs> was, as I said, it was the worst that I've ever had the camera sitting out in. And I didn't have the rain cover for it. That deluge, I think it overwhelmed the weather ceiling on the Sony. This is the A6600. And it's been brilliant. And the, but there is water in the battery compartment. It's, it's, it's wet in there. But it's still working fine. So I don't know where that's leaking through from. Hopefully the whole thing's working properly. Yeah. Wouldn't that be annoying if I got home and none of this footage was there? It is foggy. I do hate that about this, but that's the lens. That's not the actual camera. So on the coating on the inside of the lens, um, yeah, it, it, it's, I don't know what that is. Okay. I think we're almost ready to flip the pancake. Almost ready. Before I do that, I just want to give a quick shout out to my, my niece, Sophia. Um, what is she now? 11? 10? 11? I can't remember. 10? Uh, she had to spend the night in hospital uh, a couple of nights ago. Just as a precaution. So um, my brother had to stay with her the night. So it's a shout out to Sophia. Hope you're feeling better, Sophia. I know you're home now. And I hope you enjoy watching this video. I know you just watch it to see Bruce, not to see your uncle. 
Okay, am I ready to flip this? I don't know, I'm nervous, nervous. Huh, no, that needs to go a bit longer. Also, I just don't feel comfortable flipping a pan whilst using pan grippers. These things are, you know, pretty rubbish. This is taking a long time for the, uh, the camera to clear the lens. Usually takes just five minutes. So, fingers crossed it's gonna be sorted. Otherwise, I'm gonna to have to film on my phone. It'll just suddenly magically clear up as it gets hot. Oh, we're so close. We're so close to turning this over. That's Bruce barking. Bruce, come here. Come. So he's barking at probably a tree stump. Oh, there he is. Or um, a shadow. That's what he does. It doesn't mean there's an animal there at all. Yeah. He's probably thought, he's probably come over only because he thought I'm calling him over for some food. All right, come on. This has got to be ready to turn over soon. Now, it's not actually sliding. On the GSI pan, non-stick, that would be slipping and sliding. It's not doing that on this pan, which is strange. It's, it's a strange non-stick. It's a very rugged non-stick and it's very grippy. I don't think it's Teflon. I'm not sure what this is that Tranja use. So if anyone knows, put it in the comments. Probably going to get 6,000 comments now telling me what it is. No, I'm going to let that sit for just a bit longer. You probably can't see anything right now. It's probably completely fogged up. Uh. I'm going to give that another couple of minutes. That's not ready. Let me see what the camera looks like. How bad is this picture? Oh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> oh no, that's so foggy. Again, it's just this, this silly lens. I don't know why it does it. Let me give it a quick wipe and see what happens. Is that better? I think what it is, is when it's fully zoomed in, zoomed out, sorry, it, um, because the lens is so close, it just, I don't know. We'll see, it might start fogging up again. So, right, this is definitely ready to turn over now, but it's not gonna flip. It's too grippy. I don't get it. How did Tarantia do that? It is non-stick, but it's just grippy non-stick. It's like a rugged non-stick, very strange. So I don't know what the material is, but it's not moving at all. It's not sticking, <laughs> but it's just not flipping over. Hmm. 
Actually, it is sticking. I spoke too soon. It was sticking a little bit. Okay. I'm sure they're going to say I used the wrong oil. All right, here we go. <sighs> Moment of truth. Oh no, I missed. Ah. Just caught the end. <laughs> oh, you gotta laugh, gotta laugh. Almost had it. Almost. Oh, that, tell you what, that smells so good. It really does. How are we looking now? Have we started misting up? Oh, it might be all right now. Yeah, I zoomed in a little bit to get the, uh, to move the lens away from the mounting point, And maybe that makes a difference. Someone can smell it. Yeah, someone can smell the pancake. You can just tell. He has no other reason to come around here. He's not coming here because he loves me. No, no, no. It's because there's food. And this is giving off an amazing smell now. He won't go far. So, weather sit rep. The sun has gone in. It's gone completely. And it's been replaced with uh, some pretty thick cloud. So I'm guessing it's gonna rain again. Um, but the river keeps dropping. So as long as it's not heavy rain, we're okay. How's the camera, is it still okay? It's looking all right. Um, is this still a light? Yeah. All the heat's coming out this side. So you do have to keep rotating the pan. This is a, a massive pancake. It's very thick. It's, this is why it takes so long for my pancakes. So yeah, this pan, um, it did stick a little bit. Okay, that might be my fault actually because I didn't put the simmering on at first, but I should have done. I should have put the simmering on from the outset. But I do like this crusty, crusty brown bits though. Oh, it's cold. Just please don't rain. I had enough rain last night. It was torrential last night, it really was. There was one point where I was lying in bed, it just hammered down. And the sound of the river last night was insane. It was so loud. That's all you could hear. Couldn't hear the rain. It was just the river. Can't think of anywhere else I'd rather be right now though than here with Bruce and you guys and having a pancake. Bruce. Stop, you're going to pull the tent down. Stop it. <sighs> I just saw um, camping with Steve, Steve Wallace. He camped in <laughs> What was he doing? It was a, uh, a, a shelter. He made a shelter, um, but he, he didn't have a, it didn't have a tarp, I don't think. And it started raining. It was cold and raining. And I don't think he had a waterproof jacket. <laughs> I can't remember exactly. Anyway, he put a bin liner on and wore that and sort of got through it. And it was sleeting and it just looked horrible. <laughs> he really, I don't know. I don't know if that was intentional, um, but that's, for me, no thanks. That's definitely, I'm never gonna be doing that on this channel. I'll leave all of that to Steve. He is, he's the man with all that stuff. He, I think he has 
slept in a car for like a year or so of his life. He, he not living on the street, but yeah, he did live out of a car. Uh, so I think he had it rough for a while. And so all these experiences, he's done it all before, but I've never had that and I don't intend to. Okay, how are we looking? Do we have a fluffy pancake yet? You see, it's sticking again. Oh no, it's moving, okay. It's just very, I can't explain this non-stick surface. It's, it's really, really weird. It's sort of ridged for her pleasure. And it, um, yeah, I'd love to know. Yeah, in the comments, someone tell me, what is this material of the Tranja non-stick pan? Because it, it seems really rugged, not... Is it like an anodizing or something? I don't know. Can't explain the texture. So yeah, so I'm, I'll have to Google it and find out what it is, or someone can put it in the comments. It looks like we solved the problem with the camera, which is good. All right, I think I've got to eat this now because I'm starving. As I said, I've got some bacon with me as well, but that was so much meat last night. That was a big steak. I was so full. Ugh, I hate beanies. Okay. I'm gonna give this just a minute longer because I did put a lot of water in there, in the mix. And I don't throw the rest away. I take them home and then I have pancakes the next day. Buttermilk pancakes, no wastage. Get my maple syrup ready. I think this is going to require two, two of my little jars of pure Canadian maple syrup. I can't remember what it is. Is it Steve's? I think that's the one that we get here, Steve's. Oh, this looks ready. You know what? I think I might just have to chop it just to see. Can't have it gooey. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's springy, and springy is good. All right, let's transfer this. Uh, what am I doing? Okay, let's just, oh, oh God, I'm dropping everything again. I need my little one tigress table with me, but my little bushcrafty, <laughs> is, is this bushcraft if I use stones? I don't know. It is, you know, it is. It's using what nature gives you, isn't it? That's bushcraft. So using these stones set up like this as a table, there you go, that's bushcraft. Easy bushcraft. Oh, look at that. Yes. Okay, I haven't got enough hands. I need to put the flame out. Actually, what I might do is put another coffee on. But I need to, oh God, I haven't got enough hands at all. Put my simmering there. Okay, that's back at full pelt now. Yeah, another coffee, definitely. Right, pancake with lashings of maple syrup. <laughs> oh yes. Feel, feel better already, this is lifting my mood. I was quite cold then. 
Oh yes, just swimming in maple syrup. Nice sugar buzz to warm me up this morning. <laughs> Ta-da, lovely pancake. Nice and springy, lots of maple syrup. Yum. <laughs> Get that pan out of the way. Oh, bon appetit, everybody. Or in Japan, ititakimasu. Mmm. Very good. Perfect springiness. Fluffy. Oh yeah, a bit crispy on the outside. Mm. There's some really dark clouds coming over now. Oh God, please don't rain. Packing up in the rain is awful. Oh, this is so good. Got to eat quickly because it gets cold so quickly. And it is cold. This is spring. Spring in New Zealand. Very dark clouds coming over now. It's inevitable, it's going to rain. This is so good. I don't know if the microphone is picking up the sound of the birds. It's just so nice to hear. Bird life in New Zealand is being decimated by pests. Rats, stoats, possums, wasps. We get yellow jackets here. Where I am here, it's the highest concentration of wasps in the world. In the world. In summer. That's the wind blowing. There is definitely a storm coming in. In summer, you've got to be so careful. You get stung all the time. And yeah. They kill the birds. So it's nice to hear the bird song. I reckon before we invaded New Zealand, before humans came here, um, when there were no pests, it was just all natural. The, 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 the sound of the birds must have been incredible. Captain Cook, when he landed in New Zealand, said it was just unbelievable. Unbelievable, deafening, and such beautiful song. And there are very few places you can get that now in New Zealand. Some reserves. Yeah. Mmm. 
That was good. That was good. And look at that. My water is boiling. Oh dear, this weather looks ominous, it really does. It was so nice earlier. I thought I was going to get a nice sunny morning. Hm. Of course not. Of course not. Right. Copy. What I'm going to do is... That breakfast was delicious. I'm going to have this coffee. And then I'm going to pack up and get out of Dodge because I can see what's coming, it's, it's going to be grim and I don't want to be packing up in that. Yeah, that's the plan. Have my coffee. Pack up as quickly as possible and head out. We have a plan. Thanks for coming along everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. I know you like to see me suffer and defeat the elements, but I'm not willing to do it twice in one trip. And last night was bad enough. The smoke and the rain and the cold. Sure enough, it started raining again, so Let's get everything down. I'm gonna start with the tent. Poles are very lightweight, very lightweight. They fold up into nothing, as you can see. Okay, so I've emptied everything out of the tent already. It's being held up by two ridge lines right now. So I'll unpeg everything. You're helping me, Brucey. You're helping me. Thank you. I know, I know. Oh, you're getting tangled. Thank you for my kisses. Lovely. <laughs> Mind out, Brucey. Mind out, come on. Mind out. Now you're just getting in the way. Now you're just getting in the way. Oh, it's all fun and games for Brucey. <laughs> I don't know if you could see him. He's hilarious. So yeah, I've got the tent now. 
all that's holding it up is the, uh, I've got it tied off to two trees. That is one good thing about this tent, is you can just tie it between two trees and peg it out basically. You don't have to have the poles in, but it's a lot more secure with the poles. This tent is very easy to pack up. Because you can just scrunch it into the, into the pack temporarily. Just realized the, um, the lens was getting foggy again because I'd closed it all up again. Uh, yeah, silly design. So these mini carabiners are so handy.
probably can't tell on the camera because it's misting up a bit, but it is getting really dark. The cloud is coming in again. It's going to chuck down. I've got to get on with this. I don't know if you can see Brucey lying here, just patient, patiently watching. Hey, Brucey. He knows we're going home, so he's ready. He's lying so, so nicely. Can you see him over here? Such a good boy. Oh, this is cold and wet. Yuck. Oh. Oh, I actually did this side first, didn't I? Slip knot. Did very well. That was a very nice tight ridge line. So when I get home, I'll take out all the power cord. I mean I let everything dry off anyway. Um, I'll take out all the power cord, neaten it up ready to reuse it for the next one. I try and reuse paracord. I use it for other things as well as just camping. Quite like the uh, the guys that come with the Flames Creed. It's two mil, two mil braided bank line. I don't know if you can make that out, but it's good stuff. It bites really well. Jam knots and things like that work really well with this.
That's meant to get lighter. I get a lot of questions about how heavy is your pack. About 20 odd kilos when I first come in. Uh, don't forget I'm carrying a lot of stuff for Bruce. I'm carrying food, beers, <laughs> you name it, I've got it in there. It's a beast of a pack. Yeah, and all my camera gear. Camera and tripod weighs a lot. Right, got everything. Okay. See you on the way back to the car. Brucey just crossed. He just crossed over, so camp was in there. Yeah, the river's come right down. I mean, it was, it was, it was lower yesterday, obviously. But last night it was absolutely roaring. I mean, it was outrageous. So I've got to walk all the way down the riverbed now, follow this river down. That's the only time we have to cross it. Uh, a few weeks ago, um, I think it was actually two weeks ago, I attempted to come here and failed because the river was too high. Um, I could have made it, but too dangerous with Brucey. Even though he's an exceptionally strong swimmer, I couldn't take the risk. Wow, look at this, I thought I smelled something. That's a stag print right there. Yeah. And Brucey smelt them last night as well. So yeah, we, we couldn't do it last time, it was just too risky. Um, I'm not gonna risk Bruce. So, turned around and went all the way home. It's a three hour drive here, that we spent two hours trying to get to the site. Failed three hours back. That was a shocker. That was an expensive nothing. Time, money, effort, everything. Okay, I'm gonna push on to the car. Hey, Brucey. Through this little stream. It's so dainty. Why oh, it's so quiet down here? Maybe I should have camped here. <laughs> Except it's too dangerous to camp on the riverbed. Gotta be perched above it. That's about a meter higher over there where I camped. You can see where the stream is. It's actually a stream, not a river. So uh, just comes off the tops. He can smell something. He's on the scent. It's got to be a deer. All right, see you all at the car. Okay, back at the car. Oh, that was a slog. I got hot. I had to set my rain jacket off. And the sun's come out. Very moody clouds in the background, though. Look at all that snow up there. That wasn't there when I got here yesterday. Not much, but enough. We're back at the car. So yeah, quite a few modifications to the car uh, to give me access to harder to reach places. It's got a new suspension kit, lift kit, new shocks, it's got foam cell, Iron Man shocks and new leaf springs, new wheels and tires. These are ROH black tracks, steel designed for. 
designed for Australian mining. And the tires are the Yokohama Geolander Mud Terrain G003s. Got a stealth bar from ARB, smart bar, I should say. The Nighthawk um, spotlights that are incredibly bright. There's a winch under there from Iron Man. Nine and a half thousand pound winch. And my Safari Armax massive snorkel. This thing's a beast. It makes a hell of a noise when it gets cranking. So yeah, she's all ready. Oh, and there's the suspension at the front. The foam cell shocks and springs. Give me access. And there's some underbody protection for when I go over rivers. I just need to get the recovery point installed. But yeah, that, that plate runs all the way to the back. So it's it's all set up for some very heavy duty off-roading. Isn't it, Brucey? And Bruce has got a little home in the back that he can, uh, should we show them your, your space? So, oop, yeah. So Bruce travels in the back. Thank you, Brucey. The car's much higher now though, Bruce. I don't think you're gonna make it up here. I might have to lift you up. I don't think he can make that. Oh, he can, gosh. So, he lives in the back there. He's much happier up high, because then when he lies down, he can see out the window. Look at him wagging his tail. And then got these RMR drawers, which are amazing stuff. Right, Bruce is all settled now. <laughs> Look at him. He's so happy. Yeah, those drawers are cool. Right, so. Oh. <laughs> well, that was an adventure. I had a great time. Really did. Good to know that you all came along. Stay in there, Bruce. We're going home. I know, you're very happy, very excited. Right, thank you everyone for coming. Um, if you like the video, please, please give it a, a thumbs up. Please make a comment, I love to get comments. Um, and please subscribe. All those three things, comments, thumbs up and subscribe, all helps our channel. All tells YouTube that you wanna see more of this stuff. And if you've got any suggestions, ideas, I'm open to everything. Just put it in the comment. Please be nice, please be polite. <laughs> this is hard work and it doesn't always go according to plan. And remember, this is for YouTube. This is for entertainment. It's a bit of fun because I think the world needs a bit of fun right now. And let's not forget that Auckland is still in level three lockdown. They can't do uh, camping outside at all, uh, overnight. Um, and some other parts of the world are still in lockdown and people are still suffering. So, <sighs> thought for all of them as well. Thanks for coming everyone. What do you reckon, Brucey? Thank you. Wanna say thanks? Bye everybody. <laughs>